Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video from the ongoing 2019 Extra Can Open want to share with you a fantastic game which was played by Danish international master Kasa Korle against Ukrainian chess grandmaster Alexander Maiseyenko. I have to tell you that there is a huge rating gap between these two players but in this game that won't play an important factor because Casa Corle would play this game like a machine. This game was played in round 4 and now without further ado let's get started with this fascinating game and see what happened on the board. Maiseenko opened up with d4 and Corle responded with d5, c4, e6, where queen's gambit declined, knight c3, knight f6 and c takes d5, white is going for exchange variation. After c takes d5, e takes d5, white managed to get a kingside pawn majority and later can use that fact by going for f3, e4 thrust or in some cases when black is playing c6, white can even choose a different strategy by placing his rook on b1 and supporting the advance of the b pawn. But in return black is also getting some edge because in this case when recapturing on d5 with the e pawn Black is managing to open up the light squared bishop's diagonal and later can also place the rook on the semi-open e file and support the knight on e4. Let's see what's going to happen next. Bishop g5 by Maisienko, c6, e3, bishop d6, bishop d3, black castles kingside, queen c2, h6, bishop h4, rook e8, knight e2, and a5. In here, usually black is playing knight bd7. This is a move which Vladimir Kramnik chose against Shakriar Mamidyarov in 2018, against which the latter chose g4 move, but finally Kramnik managed to win in that game. But in our game after knight e2 we have a5. It turns out that this is the start of a very interesting knight maneuver, which Kalsa Korle would bring into life. He is securing this a6 square for the knight h3 knight a6, a3 knight c7, white castles kingside, knight e6, f3 and knight g5. How many consecutive knight moves we saw in this game, guys? Uh, we saw 1, 2, 3, 4 consecutive knight moves. This is interesting, but the most interesting part of the game is still waiting for us. So in here, white went for this standard e4 thrust all the time. Maisienko was preparing it. It looks very common to this exchange variation, as I have already mentioned above, when white is getting a kingside pawn majority, is bringing into life this idea. But it turns out that in this case, going for e4 is a total mistake. Instead, it was better to play f4, or bishop takes g5, or bishop f2. There are so many cho choices for white. The position is equal, the players have equal chances, but in our game we have e4 and in here Casa Corle made a fantastic move which definitely Maisenko was not expecting. You can pause the video and try to find Black's next move. Ready? In here Corle played knight tx e4. He made another move this time with his f knight. F takes e4, all white could do was to accept the knight sacrifice after which this time we have another move by the knight, knight takes h3 check, how do you like this craziness guys? Black is opening up the queen's diagonal and in return now will munch the bishop, queen takes h4. By going for a peace sacrifice, black managed to totally destroy white's king side and now white king will become an easy target for aggressive black pieces. Look at this monstrous bishop's eyeballing on white's king side. Together with the queen, they definitely will finish their dirty, bloody job. Rook f2. Meanwhile, white wants to somewhat support his king with the rook, but now comes bishop takes h3, rook d1, and another insane move, guys. Now, question arises, how should black proceed with the game? In here, Stockfish is suggesting a simple d takes e4 move and gives black a huge advantage. But this is not which Casa Corley chose. After rook d1, he actually made a staggering move and he played rook e5. How do you like this rook sacrifice, guys? With a simple 
Rook g5 threat. All white could do was to accept that rook sacrifice as well, after which, as black managed to open up the g1 a7 diagonal, this time the dark squared bishop joined the attack from that diagonal, pinning the rook. Knight d4, a desperate attempt, but already whatever white plays, white's position is totally lost. If knight f4, then queen g3 check is coming. You can't even cover your king, there is a checkmate, this rook is pinned. Or after bishop c5, if rook f1, then after bishop takes f1 again, black is going to win very easily. Let's go back. In our game, after bishop c5, we have knight d4, and black also munched that knight. Rook d2, queen g3 check, king h1, bishop g4 with a simple bishop f3 threat. Bishop f1, well, if a move like rook g2, then this time queen h4 check is coming and white king is getting checkmate hit. Mating ideas are all over the board, you know. There are so many white pieces on the board, but it turns out that they can't protect their king. There is a miscoordination between white pieces. Or maybe black pieces are too active? I'm not sure. Bishop f1 and after bishop f3 check, you can't even capture because of this checkmate. Bishop g2, queen h3 check, white resigned. Because there is an imminent checkmate. If king g1, then queen takes g2 checkmate is coming. This bishop on g1 a7 diagonal really played a huge role. And after queen h3 check, we have a resignation. What a game, guys! As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, Casa Corley simply played this game like a machine in a hyper-aggressive attacking style. Well, in the end, let's also solve a chess puzzle. Please take a look at this position and try to find the mating line for white. It's white to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you. Feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.